Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to the Underground Christian Center on this beautiful Sunday morning. Let's give God some praise on this morning. I want you to stand up on your feet and give your God a hallelujah. Give your God a thank you for bringing you through this week. We just want to thank God that you've chosen this service and this church to be your church of fellowship on this morning. The final Sunday of February. Can you believe we heading into March or next week? This is the final Sunday of February, the Sunday that God has given his only son to die for us, the Sunday where God rose up on the third day. So we are just grateful and thankful to have such a heavenly father on this morning. Are you grateful? Are you excited? Are you, are you grateful for God? Let's give God another hand praise. Let's give God a hallelujah. There's never too much praise. There's never too much worship. There's never too much thankful and gratefulness. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's thank God on this morning for not leaving us where our life was leading us. Let's thank God for changing us and picking us up and turning our lives around. Let's thank God that he chose us. Let's thank God that he chooses us every single day. He chose you this morning to wake up. So now's a new day. Today's a new day. Today's not the day you worry about yesterday. Today is not the day where you worry about tomorrow. Tomorrow's got its own trouble. So let's just stand in the presence and stand on what's going on right now. So we just thank God for keeping us. We thank God for choosing us. We thank God for loving on us. We serve a God who already made a decision about us. So I thank God for already having a decision, for God having the final say over your life, for God having the final say over your life. Hallelujah. We can speak the name of Jesus but do you really know the name of Jesus I'm not saying just Jesus 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 and not know the God that we're talking about the God that we're worshiping and praising hallelujah we can't say Jehovah Jireh and not believe that he won't provide our every need and worry where our next comes from we can't call you Jehovah Nisi and not believe that he reigns victorious that he's victorious over all we can't call God Jehovah Shalom and not believe that he is the one of peace that the one even in the middle of chaos he still grants you joy we can't call him Jehovah Elohim and not believe that he's the Lord of Lords and not believe that he's the King of Kings so we thank you God for your great name we thank you God for the name that's above all every names and we worship you on this morning we praise you on this morning because you are the God of wonders you are the God of miracles you are the God of our salvation so we are just grateful to call you our father we're grateful daily to call you our savior our redeemer we call you our deliverer we call you our way maker there's nothing in this world that we can do without you God so we just pray that you can remain with us in the name of Jesus God we're grateful that you walk with us daily hallelujah we're glad that you talk to us daily hallelujah Lord we just pray that you turn our ears to your voice God uh, that we can understand and hear your voice in the name of Jesus uh, that you turn our hearts to accept you inside of them hallelujah that you make a space conducive in our spirit for you Lord that you move stuff out of the way for you to show your face in the name of Jesus that you move stuff out of the way that we can prioritize you a little bit better in the name of Jesus uh, you can call off for work for everything else uh, you can request off for everything else uh, but where does your priority lie when it comes to the king of kings when it comes to the one who saved you day by day where is the one who saved you by his grace and his mercy where is the one who washed you with his blood where do you prioritize the God of your salvation how do you manage him within your schedule so God we just pray that you move stuff out of the way that you put yourself at the top and at the middle and at the end that there's no time within our day where we don't gratify your name where we don't acknowledge your name we don't acknowledge Acknowledge your presence, God. Just give us the spirit of acknowledgement that there's nothing that we have done or will do without you. So we just thank you in advance for all the things that you grant us. We thank you in advance for all the things that you've given us. And we thank you for all the things that we may have neglected to thank you for. For all of the things that we have taken for granted of. We don't take 
take for granted of any of your blessings, God. Uh, you, we've taken enough of your credit. We've taken so much of your credit. So, God, it's time that we give you what we owe you. It's time that we give you the worship that we owe you. It's time out to say, I, 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 uh, and say, God, 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 I know you did it. God, I know that you're in the midst. God, I know that that was you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I just thank God for knowing that it's God. I thank God for knowing that it's God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So we'll forever respond to you. Hallelujah. We'll respond to your call in the name of Jesus. We respond to your call in the name of Jesus, God. We just continue to stand fast in your word. Hallelujah. We won't be, we won't be shaken or moved. Hallelujah. When people try to attack and the enemy tries to get in from every which way, huh? We keep our minds stayed on you. Hallelujah. Because we know that you're a fortress. We know that you're a fortress. And we run to you and we're safe. Hallelujah. There's nowhere else we can run to. I don't care where you think you're hiding. I thank God I serve a God that'll pick you up. I thank God that I serve a God that can look around. And he keep his eyes stayed on you. He keep his eyes watching over you. That when you think you're ducking from God, he done already went behind you. He's standing behind you. When you're looking this way, he's looking that way. He got your back. He's got your heart. He's got your mind. He's got all that you give to him. He got all that you give to him. He God can't bless you with the things you won't let go of in the name of Jesus. So God said, take your hand off of things that you have given me. Stop giving me things that you haven't given up in the name of Jesus. You want me to work this thing out in your favor. Ah, God doesn't need your help. God doesn't need your help. We serve a God that's God all by himself. So when you give it to him, you trust him. When you give it to him, you have faith and you believe in him. Don't contradict what the word tells us to do. You give it to him and you give it away. You give it to him and you walk away in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. So we thank God that you are just a place of treasure that we can just give you things, God. And we give you things that you just take safe. And we give you things. So God, thank you for being such a treasure. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you for being a shareable God. I ain't stingy with my God. I want you to have it. I want you to have it. I want you to know the God that we serve. I wish I had somebody that knew the God that I served on this morning. Come on in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah for being the God that we choose to serve. Hallelujah. We'll forever serve. We'll forever be grateful for you. Hallelujah. God, we thank you. God, we bless you in the name of Jesus, God. God, we bless you in the name of Jesus, God. God, I pray for those who are claiming sickness. Uh, I don't speak sickness over you right now, but God, we just pray that you touch him in the name of Jesus. Uh, I come against that spirit of owning things that don't belong to you. Uh, it's not your anxiety. It's not your depression. It's not your sickness. You give that thing to God. He has already said it. By his stripes, we are healed. Uh, and if we shall believe that he's Jehovah Rapha, then there's no way that we can claim these things that people have put on of our lives, that we have called into our lives. When well, a man think of in his heart so is he so you keep claiming my anxiety this and my depression that then let's just believe that's what you got because you haven't given that thing to God yet so I just I just command you to give that thing to God don't accept things God hasn't given you don't accept anything God hasn't given you hallelujah hallelujah so we're just grateful again that you've chosen the underground Christian center as your place of worship I promise you this is a Bible believing Bible teaching church and we're just thankful for the shepherds over this house that make sure that the vision and the mission of this house continues to go forward that they're just continuing to build those up for the kingdom of God amen amen so give God a, a hand praise on this morning we're just grateful for his spirit on this morning we're thankful for God's presence on this morning hallelujah hallelujah we're grateful for you this morning wherever you may be we're grateful for you this morning that you still decided to click on this this morning and say you know what I decide to choose Jesus on this morning to give my worship to God on this morning so we're thankful for you we thank you for showing up that's part of it we thank you for taking that first step that's part of it so picking that thing up and saying I'm gonna go on the service this morning 
morning, but I do encourage you to come into the house. Come outside your house and come into the household of faith. Amen. Amen. So every Sunday we know we recite our vision and our mission statement. And I want you to really say this with your heart and believe it with your heart that it is something that shall come to pass to become the greatest loving, sowing, and harvesting church for the kingdom of God. Just short and sweet vision that goes amongst this house and the mission goes right along with this vision statement. And our mission is to sow the word of God into the hearts of all people regardless of their race, culture, and financial position in order to put, create a true Christian disciple. So if you've said that and you believe that, you got to give God a thank you and a hallelujah on this morning. So thank you. Thank you for saying that and being obedient to our vision and our mission statement on this morning. And so now we're moving to the part of service where we're just giving out our announcements, all the, the wonderful things that are going on here at the Underground Christian Center. And listen, the last night's pop-up service was amazing and a blessing for somebody. I'm sure it was. So you want to make sure you got on your notification bell to make sure you get all the things that's going on, get all the, the live service that's showing up here at the Underground Christian Center. Amen? Amen. The Underground Christian Center announcements are as followed. Please join us every Sunday at 10 a.m. for two anointed messages in one service from God's anointed vessels. We guarantee that if you continuously fellowship with us, your life will never be the same. Do you desire to have a foundation that is built on biblical values? Every Thursday at 7 p.m., get ready for a Bible study that expounds on God's truth, led by the Holy Spirit through our very own Bishop Malcolm Duff Sr. Are you married, single, or divorced? Listen, we're calling you to join our lovely leaders every second Wednesday at 7 p.m. as they share key blocks that's required to build a healthy relationship fit for a role model marriage. Gentlemen, join Bishop Malcolm Duff Sr. every third Wednesday at 7 p.m. for the men's empowerment session where men are being repositioned for spiritual victory in every area of their life. Ladies, join First Lady P every second Saturday at 10 a.m. for the amazing Pillow Talk session. The Pillow Talk Empowerment Session is designed to assist every woman with developing a stronger relationship with the Word of God, as well as discovering her true inner beauty. You do not want to miss it. For preaching engagements, evangelism, or prayer, please reach out to us via phone, mail, or email. If you'd like to financially bless the ministry, utilize the Give Lifely app or use our website or mail a check-in via traditional mail. We'd like to thank you again for your support. Amen. Come on, let's put all blessed hands together for one more time. Amen. We pray, God, that you have governed these announcements. Amen. Come on, let's put all blessed hands together. Let's give the God of our salvation the appropriate praise. Did you not hear the woman of God this morning? Glory be to God that was used mightily by God. Glory be to God. There's an appropriate praise that God looks for his people. Amen. Can we stand up on our feet? I don't care where you at in live sanctuary service or if you you at home viewing YouTube live or Facebook. I'm telling you right now, I want you, amen, to stand on your feet and give God the appropriate praise. I don't care where you at. Come on, let's put our blessed hands together for the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Amen. Glory be to God. We can't get any better than having the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ on our side. And when we have him on our side, we don't need to have to worry. We don't need to have to fret. We don't have to be uh, discouraged, uh, but we can be encouraged because we had the what? The King of Kings and the Lord of Lords on our side. And if you can just vision amen, glory be to God, like the woman of God said, that God came in the back of you, amen. But if you can clearly vision God all over and around you, uh, guarding and protecting you, uh, you would not sit on your feet this morning. You wouldn't sit on your happy buttocks 
folks this morning. Oh, but you will stand up and give the God of your salvation a good God bless you. The God of the Bible. He is our King. He is our Lord. He is our Savior. He'll never leave us nor forsake us, church. And we got to know this and deep down in our spirit, man, like never before, we got to know in this trying season that we're in that God got your back. Glory be to God. I want you to touch yourself. I want you to lay your hands on yourself and say, God got me despite of what you trying to accept in your life. Glory be to God. Do you not know we had things on our life because we what? Accept it. Glory be to God. Nothing can come into your life, man or woman of God, unless you accept it. Glory be to God. Unless you lay down the power of God that is invested in you to pick up something that the devil said that you have. Oh, can you hear me this morning? Glory be to God. We are on fire on the Lord's side. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Stop accepting things. Glory be to God that God said you should not accept. He said just accept the Lord Jesus Christ, my only begotten son. And whoever shall believe in him shall what? not perish, but come into everlasting life. Come into the life of abundance. Glory be to God. It did not say in God's word, his 66 books that we ought to take on something. Glory be to God that we ought to expect, ex uh, accept what the devil is given to us. Oh no, amen. Glory be to God. We do not accept what man or the devil placed in our life. We curse every seed that's been planted in the mouth, that's been planted in the head, in the heart, in the mind of God's people. We curse it to the core. Glory be to God because it has no precedence in the lives of the believer. If you believe that, put your blessed hands together. Oh, yes. Oh, yes, church. Put your blessed hands together because we serve a magnificent God. And before glory be to God, hallelujah, I go into further. Amen. Glory be to God. We always ask, amen, if anyone would like to be saved in this last month, this last Sunday in the month of February, like the woman of God, I cannot believe we're about to cross over to the month of March, the third year, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Glory be to God. We're crossing over to something magnificent. Amen. Amen. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. That the faithful few will experience in this year. Glory be to God. But if you have never accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, what a beautiful day and a beautiful opportunity to do that. Amen. Glory be to God. And those that are in a backsliding condition, amen, you can do that as well. Recommit yourself back to God the Father. Amen. For Romans chapter 3 verses uh, 23 states this. Well, we all sin and come short of the glory of God. Amen. Glory be to God. All of us here have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. That's why we need a savior. For Romans chapter 10 verses 9 says this. If thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, not Muhammad, not Bahud, glory be to God, not Harry Krishna, but the Lord Jesus Christ, and shall believe in thy heart that God has raised them from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believing unto righteousness, and with the mouth confess confession is made unto salvation. Now, all you have to do, glory be to God, is confess the Lord Jesus with your mouth and believe in your beautiful heart, glory be to God, that God had raised them from the dead and you shall be saved. Amen. Glory be to God. Say a short, powerful prayer with me. Father, in the name of Jesus, I come to your throne and presence for asking for you to forgive me of all unrighteousness, that you will forgive my sins today, God. In the name of Jesus, I confess the Lord Jesus with my mouth. Glory be to God, and I believe in my heart and mind that you have raised him from the dead, and now he sits at the right hand of you, God, ever in, in assessing for us. Father, I just thank you that you chose me, that you handpicked me. Glory be to God, out of darkness into your marvelous light today, God. In the name of Jesus, and Father, I just praise you all the days of my life. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Come on, let's put our blessed hands together for those new converts. Amen. That recommitted themselves back unto God the Father. Amen. Glory be and those that were in a backsliding condition, can we praise God for them as well? Glory be to God because they came on back home. Glory be to God. And when they came back home, they experienced the love. Glory be 
to God in the presence of God and knowing that God had never left them. Glory be to God. So let's put our blessed hands together one more time for the new converts and those that recommitted themselves back to God the Father. I'm telling you, if the angels are rejoicing, we here at the Underground Christian Center is also rejoicing with you. Glory be to God because we're stepping on the devil's head this morning. Glory be to God because we are grateful, amen, that the devil no longer have a stronghold around your neck. Glory be to God. Now you have crossed over into God's marvelous light. I encourage you, glory be to God, to stay in the vein of God. I'm not promising you there's going to be rosy days and every day sun shiny and bright. Oh, but it's going to be a time, glory be to God, hallelujah, where the devil is going to try to come back at you. Glory be to God. But you stand flat-footed on the word of God. Glory be to God. You be on that wall like Nehemiah. If you set in your heart and mind and determine that you're not going to go back there, God got you. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. When you truly had that rate made up mind, glory be to God. I don't care what comes your way. You're going to remain in God. So welcome into the body of Christ. Amen. Can we put our blessed hands together one more time for the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords? Yes, I do have a word from the Lord. Amen. But before I go into this word, amen. Glory be to God. Holly, I'm going to share with you what was shared to me this morning. Yes, what was shared to me. See, the enemy is chipping after holiness and righteousness. It's just like a cherry peat picker, just chipping and chipping along the way. See, when, when we as when, men and women of God, and I'm just going to use a woman of God, amen. When we walked away, amen, glory be to God, of representing and looking like godliness and then turned ourselves into looking like the world by meaning as like, remember before we used to wear stockings, amen. Yeah. Glory be to God. We used to wear stockings, okay. Glory be to God. And you probably say, lady, though, stockings is nothing. That's superficial. Yeah, but I'm telling you what is done in natural can be done in the spirit so now we have women of God amen when they took away cherry picking check, 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 this is what the devil is doing picking 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 after holiness and godliness glory be to God when he allow us amen as true believers as true Christians amen to take off the stockings glory be to in the spiritual realm the devil knew that hey you could take off spiritual things amen you won't grab a hold to the spirit amen you will do away with it you will say that don't pertain to me glory be to God see he knows glory be to God even though we see it creeping and creeping in now the women of God is not wearing stockings now they're wearing all kinds of stuff so now you can glory be to God distinguish what the household of faith is with the world because why the first ladies are now looking like the world uh, glory be to God hallelujah where we should be a separate person the world should identify and look at us and say we are separate we are set apart the world can identify okay these are the holy rollers as they used to call us these are the women of God these are the men of God there should be a separation but I'm telling you the devil is picking he's nitpicking he's been doing things for many many decades and if he can move us for us look at hysteria looking like not of, of God, amen, glory be to God, not of holiness, of righteousness, of professing, glory be to God, then that means that he can sway us, amen, glory be to God, to putting down, amen, accepting, glory be to God, homosexuality and lesbian, uh-huh, yeah, 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 because now we didn't came open, now we accept stuff because now we're saying, you don't take all that, now we're saying, glory be to God, hallelujah, you don't take all that, you can still be in the world, and still be in church and look like the church and not look like the church i'm sorry but look like the world and that's accepting of god but it's not accepting of god people of god we got to know glory be to god that we're separated and glory be to god and don't allow the devil to take things from you as simple as wearing stockings as simple as putting on a dress on Glory be to God, if he can get you to change your mind, saying that you can come in here looking any and kind of way, then he knows, glory be to God, that anything that's written in God's word, amen, he can turn you. He can turn you around. And we cannot allow God, we cannot allow the devil, amen, to do that to us, amen? That's right. Glory be to God. I hope you hear me this morning, amen? Because he's cherry picking. He's picking, picking, and picking, and picking. Glory be to God. 
and we are sleeping and unaware and we are we allowing it to happen. That's why, like I said, you see women of God, men of God standing in God's pulpit look just like the world with sunglasses on, mm -hmm, with jeans on. Glory be to God. I used to wear jeans. But when God started dealing with me to put back on this, there's a reason why. Even though as simple as that. And then he was like, if he can get you to not look like holiness and righteousness, then he can get you not to follow the word of God. Yeah, you're right. The thing spiritually. That's why we see everything adapting in to the world. Because we lost our stance for holiness and righteousness. Right. We lost our stand as a body of Christ. But one thing for sure, there's a remnant that hears God. And God said, my sheep knows my voice. Others, we won't follow. Even if we get off the beaten track, glory be to God, God has a way to bring his sheep off of that beaten track back into the straight and narrow gate that leads to heaven with him. That's why we got to praise God. He shows us our errors of our ways because he loves us so much and he don't wish that none should perish. He don't want to send people to hell, but it's our choices that sends us to hell. Oh, come on. This ain't even in my, this is not even what I'm talking about. Amen. But I'm flowing. Amen. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. In the spirit. Don't allow the devil to hoodwink and bamboozle us any longer. We should look separate. It should be a distinction look between the world and the church. We shouldn't do that. So because we let our standards down low. Because now we don't judge things according to the word, according to the Bible. Yeah. We lowered our standard, and this is what we see. This is what we see. Unrecognizable, if in fact, if that's a true man or woman of God, because discernment has left the building. Yeah. Wow. And when the discernment has left the building, that means the Holy Ghost is not operating. The Holy Ghost is not in you. So we need the Holy Ghost because he's the discerner of all things. He discerns truth, truth of God's word. Amen. He put it all together. And he reveals truth unto us. So let's not sleep. Wake up out of our sleep. Open up our eyes so Christ can shine upon us. So we can see the error of our ways. To see how we allow the enemy to come in and creep in like never before. Because we let our guard down. We let our standard down. And some of us believe that our standards should be down. But you got to watch those people. Because those people that believe that our standards should remain down, they're wolves in sheep's clothing. They there to hoodwink and bamboozle you for following them and their ways and their perverted ways. Versus the ways of God and with the ways of the 66 books that God left with us to follow. So I hope uh, you got something. I hope you got an amen in your spirit. Amen. Because God loves us. Check your life. Check your life. Check it. Be true with yourself. Be honest. Evaluate yourself. And see if you let the standard of God down. See if you let the standard of God down. And if you honest with yourself and allow Holy Spirit to shine light upon you, you will see where you let your standard down and you allow the devil to take you down a road that God said, I never intended you to go. We bless the name of the Lord this morning. Amen. Come on, let's put our blessed hands together. If I can just hold your attention for just some more fleeting moments. Amen. We're going to talk about dead to sin. Uh-huh. Dead to sin. This morning, you'll find me planted in Romans chapter six. And as you get your Bibles, if you haven't done so, we're going to examine what it is to be dead to sin. As what we are noticing and seeing on a daily happening in ministries across the country is that a numerous amount of Christians, do you hear me? Christians are not dead to sin. As evidence of many so-called professing Christians lifestyles that are opposite of professing holiness and righteousness. As evidence of what we are seeing and hearing taking place in the four walls of the building, which should be the Lord's house. We are allowing the word, the world 
to penetrate by means of allowing twerking, uh huh, allowing sororities and fraternities to have their day in the local four walls of the building, which is what idolatry. One may ask, why is that Lady Duff? Because they are worshiping Greek mythological dummy gods. That's idolatry. People of God, it is clear that those individuals that does such things is not dead to sin as their flesh is on parade and in control, which we all should know by now. When the flesh is in charge, then you very well know that individual or individuals is not dead to sin. They are susceptible to it. Therefore, this morning entitled message entitled dead to sin will cause you to examine your life to see if, in fact, you are indeed dead to sin or does sin still has a foothold stronghold in your life. Let me say this as a Christian, we should not allow sin to reign in our mortal bodies, nor be a slave to sin. Therefore, we are going to dive right into it. As the book of Romans, you'll find me in the book of Romans, chapter six, reveals to us not only if we are still allowing sin to run supreme in our lives, but Romans also tells, reveals to us the state of the world in the first chapter. It also talks about justification by faith in Jesus Christ. He also talks about God's work in the lives of those that are delivered from sin. Romans also talks about the work of the Holy Spirit within us and the list goes on and on church 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 chosen remnant mm -hmm. church you who are a chosen remnant you'll notice that Apostle Paul opened with a question in chapter 6 of Romans asking shall we continue in sin so that grace may abide Therefore, are you there at Romans chapter six? And we're going to read that together. Media department, make sure you have Romans chapter six. Amen. We're going to read it in its entirety. Amen. amen. Are you there, church? Say amen. amen. Verse one of Romans chapter six says this. It asks a question. What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? See, this question came after about after Apostle Paul having proven that sinfulness of both Jews and Gentiles. And we here at the Underground Christian Center in this world right now are the Gentiles. Uh -huh. Apostle Paul had to deal with sin and the secret of the victorious life, holy life, which is the mastery of nullifying sin in our moral bodies. That's why that question came about. Glory be to God, because we now took in the grace message to a whole different level that God never intended to. Grace is not given for us to continue in sin. Grace is given to us, amen, to remain sinless. The power over sin. That is your grace message. Now, if in fact you fall into sin when you really shouldn't, grace will take you. You have a savior, which is Jesus Christ, that you can repent to. And never return back to that sin. So now we hear grace messages out there and saying, oh, baby, you can do what you want to do. All you got to do is 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 is, is acknowledge and, and all you got to do is just, for, you know, ask God for forgiveness. The devil is a liar because many of people have done that. They still go back into that sin. They still have not fully been delivered. So Paul had to ask that question starting off in Romans chapter six. Then he gives the answer, amen, in verse 2. He says, God forbid. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. How should we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? In other words, Apostle Paul was saying, if we are dead to sin, then how can we still live in sin and profess to be dead with Christ? Mm -hmm. It doesn't work. It doesn't work. So if we dead with Christ, why is sin still reigning in our mortal bodies? Know ye not, this is verse three, he says this, know ye not that so many of us as were baptized into Jesus Christ were baptized into his death. So if we profess to be with God, baptized in the Lord, we was baptized in his death, amen? Mm -hmm. We were baptized in Jesus Christ who knew no sin, but died for sin for us. 
So if you know that we were what baptized in Jesus Christ, yeah. sin should not reign in our bodies. Therefore, we are buried with him by baptism unto death. That like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also shall walk in newness of life. In other words, as Christ died completely, so us as Christians must be completely separated from sin and be saved from sin by God, by the Lord Jesus Christ. And having no more connection with it, that sin, then what? He made a reference to a dead body has departed the spirit. Amen. That's how sin should be us as the believer. It should be dead to us. Mm -hmm. yeah. A dead body don't have movement. Am I right about it? Right. The dead body can't stand up. Amen. And sin. Amen. Because it doesn't have a spirit. That's how sin should be with us. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. As the spirit, the body from a dead body, so should sin be towards us. Just as it took the mighty power of God to raise Christ, it will take God's glory to bring alive the dead soul of sinners and make them new creatures in a moment. Uh huh. Verse 5 says this, For if we have been planted together in the likeness of his death, we shall be also in the likeness of his resurrection. Verse six says, knowing this, that our old man, uh -huh, our old man, meaning the sinful, disobedient and corrupt nature of man whose action and spirit was dominated by Satan and demonic spirits is crucified with him. That the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth we shall not serve sin. Amen. When we had that old man, when we crucified that old man, when we put that old man away, amen. Glory be to God. It's deeds and it's tactics. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. That once was influenced by Satan and demonic spirits. But when we are dead to sin, we no longer allow the devil and demonic spirit to be active and operative in our lives. Amen. Can I get an amen? amen? For he that is dead, verses 7 said, for he, is, for he that is dead is free from sin. Let me pause right there. And let me say this again. For he that is dead is freed from sin. And saying being dead to sin does not mean that that person or sin is dead. Uh -uh. But both are still in existence. The same as before, but to each other, they are also being non-existent. Okay. In other words, you're numb to sin. There's no sensation, no appetite for sin. It becomes non-existent to those that are dead to sin. When it comes non-existent, that means that we are still existing, right? Sin is still existing. You and I still existing. But sin should not reign in us. It should be non-existent to us. It is dead. To, uh, it is numb. We are numb to sin. Amen. It is dead to us. When you look at the dictionary of the meaning of dead, one of his meaning is what? Of a part of the body having lost sensation numb. When we are dead to sin, our spirit no longer sins. Yeah. Our flesh no longer sins. We are dead. We are numb to it. So when sin presents itself, we identify it, but it don't, we don't have no reaction to it. It's no sensation to us. It does, bring, it does not bring us any joy. It doesn't harmonize with us because why? We're dead to sin. Yeah. I hope you get what I'm saying, church. Good. Verse 8 says this. Now, if we be dead with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him. Am I right about it? Right. Verse 9 says, knowing that Christ being raised from the dead dieth no more. Death have no more dominion over him. Verse 10 says, for in that he died, he did. He died unto sin once. But in that he liveth, he liveth unto God. Likewise, reckon ye also yourselves to be dead indeed unto sin, but alive unto God through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Let me tell you something. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. When we are dead indeed to sin, amen, we are alive in Christ. Amen. We are alive in Christ to die to a thing or a person. Hear me well, is to have nothing to do with and to be totally separated from it or him. Let me repeat that one more time. 
to die to a thing or a person, uh huh, to die to this flesh, mm hmm, is to, to die to that thing which is which is sin. Yeah. Is to have nothing to do with it, yeah. and to be totally separated from it or him. Yeah. We can say to live to a person or thing is to be wholly given up to. And to have intimate connection with that personal thing. Having the old man crucified means that one has no further dealings with him. So when we have, when we don't sin, amen, when we don't have sin, we have no further dealings with sin. When we decide we don't want to be bothered with that person, what we do, we don't have no more further dealings with that person, right? Mm -hmm. When that person crosses one to two, three times, amen, we, we, we crazy, right? Yeah. Right now, it's going to be a time where you say, I'm not dealing with you no more. Right. And that is just like sin. When we are dead to sin, this is how we should act. We should never want to be bothered with that again. We'll do away with it. Yeah. Now, ask this question to you. Now, if you can do away with a person so easily, why can't you do away with that sin? Mm. Why can't you be dead to sin? We should look at sin as offensive to the body of Christ. Yeah. Oh, I'm going to say that again. We should look at sin as being offensive to the body of Christ. And one offended, they don't have no dealings with it. So we should act offended when sin tries to come up and tries to captivate us and pull us back out. We should be offended. We should stand up with a holy boldness. Verse 12 says, let not sin therefore reign in your mortal bodies that you shall obey it in the lust thereof. Apostle Saul said, don't let that sin reign in your body that you, you should be obey the lust thereof. Because sin is nothing but lust, y'all. Yeah, okay, it's nothing but lust. First, th verse 13 says, nothing yield, nothing, neither yield ye your members as instruments of unrighteousness unto sin, but yield yourself unto God as those that are alive from the dead and your members as instruments of righteousness unto God. Verse 14 said, for sin shall not have dominion over you, for you are not under the law, but under grace. What then shall we sin? Because we are not under the law, but under grace. Here go Apostle Paul says, God forbid. Oh no, no, we shouldn't even think about that. <laughs> That shouldn't even be mentioned. That shouldn't even come as a fault. That suggestion shouldn't even come into our mind. God forbid if that happened. Then what Christ had died on the cross becomes nullified. It's a waste. If he didn't save us from ourself, he didn't save us from our sinful self. To redeem us back unto God the Father, what, that, what, God, what Christ did would be in vain. He did nothing. So verse 16 says this, know ye not that to whom you yield yourself servants to obey, his servants you are to whom you obey, whether of, get this, whether of sin unto death or of obedience unto righteousness. Apostle said, whatever you yield to, amen, that is your master. Yes. 